love him this morning. I appreciate him for his many blessings upon me this morning. If I could, though, I would like for one of the children to come and get a name out of the prayer box. Is that Thurston? Come get a name out of the prayer box for me. Come on, I want you to get a name for me. You get a name for me? Come on, hop up here. There you go. Hand me a name. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all give him a big hand. Didn't he do a good job? Oh, he did such a good job. Amen. Praise the Lord. Had several uh, names that's been placed in this box, and it's it's getting more and more names in it. It seems like every week as we have so many needs in our homes and our communities and our everyday walk of lives and this week, whenever you pray, uh, remember Kelly Neal. Uh, I believe this is Sister Gail's husband. And uh, remember him. And uh, she has placed his name in there for the church to be praying. And I know they're gone this week. I believe they're gone up to Kentucky. Am I right? And uh, so remember them. And I know she hates not being uh, here at the, at the church uh, for church time. Uh, but certainly remember her. Also, uh, remember Sister Ann. Uh, Brother Keith and I went and visited with her uh, Thursday uh, afternoon and uh, had a great time sitting with her and talking with her. And Her daughter is wanting her to move to Tifton, and, uh, and I believe this is going to come to pass. I believe she said she'd sold her house. Uh, they just haven't uh, finalized everything or they hadn't, moved, hadn't had to move yet. Uh, so uh, if don't nothing happen, she's going to be moving to Tifton uh, where her daughter can be closer with her. Uh, but she said she does want to come to church here still if she if she can, as long as she can drive. Uh, but she's had a lot of health issues, a lot of different things going on. Uh, and I told her whether she was here or not, we would certainly be uh, praying for her uh, and would keep her in, her in our prayers and her family. And uh, so let's let's don't forget about her, if the Lord willing. Uh, we've got several that are just uh, for one reason or another. You know, they're they're not able to be with us on a regular basis like they'd like to be. Uh, but the church is is not uh, going to uh, stop because somebody's not here. And I don't mean that in a rude way, but I mean it in the way that uh, God's got a plan. God's got a purpose and a will, and we've got to continue to search and to seek and to press into that which God would have us to do. And whenever somebody's not here, uh, they're missed. Amen, they're missed. And it, it's hard when you see empty seats and you know somebody should be there. But at the same time, the end result is I want to make heaven my home. And I want others to make heaven their home. And, uh, and in the day and hour in which we live, let's pray for one another. Let's keep each other in prayer. Amen, that God would bless and God would help. Uh, this morning, uh, the message that the Lord laid on my heart uh, as I was praying and seeking Him this week, uh, if you have your Bibles and you want to turn with me, turn to the 15th chapter of the book of Acts. Amen. And I'm going to read some verses around and about. And the Lord dealt with me on a certain topic and it has to do with that which is coming and who are you going to battle with? Who are you going to battle with? I don't mean who are you fighting, but I mean who is with you in the battle. Who stands beside you in your battle? Who comes along and helps you whenever you're going through something? Who have you allowed in your life to get close with you and to be a part of you, and you depend on them, they depend on you. Uh, you could look at this uh, as a husband and wife. 
You could look at this as friend. Uh, you could look at this as family. But who do you depend on? Who do you call and who do you ask to come and to help you in your time of need? I, I'm not talking about we don't call on God, but I'm talking about the people that God put in our life. And the Bible says, you know, not to believe every spirit, but to try the spirits and see if they be of God. And understanding that not everything that cries, Lord, Lord, is talking or crying to the same Lord that you are. Not everybody is in the same place that you are. Not everybody's in the same uh, spiritual uh, 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 ladder or the rung on the ladder as you are. And what I mean by this is uh, we've got things that are coming that are ahead. They're not here yet, but they're coming. And what I want to warn the church and wake the church up about is this, is that which is coming is stronger than you are. That that we're fixing to face is greater than you are. It's not greater than God that's in you, but it's greater than you are in the sense that if we're not where we need to be with God, we will allow ourselves to be overwhelmed with what's coming. To this point, the enemy has fought against us uh, and has tried to keep us from serving God. And we've all gone through battles. We've all gone through troubles. We've gone through trials. But he's turning up somewhat the, the intensity of that which he's fighting against us. The intensity has been turned up. And those that are going to live for God in the day and hour that's coming are going to see a, a concerted effort or a confederated effort uh, of, of entities, of governments and friends and powers that be and people to come against the people that love God. And when I say this, I'm talking about those that serve God through His Son, Jesus Christ. When I use that term God, uh, uh, the world uses the term God, but I specifically mean uh, uh, the Lord God Jehovah, the I am that I am, the God, the, uh, uh, the Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, amen, the God of all gods, amen, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, he who uh, uh, loved us and gave his Son for us. Uh, the Bible says in John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, amen, understanding that God loved us and cared for us uh, uh, to the point, amen, that we were lost and undone in need of, uh, of saving, and the Lord intervened, came, the Bible says in John's gospel, uh, amen, that the Word was made flesh, amen, uh, and it came and it dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, amen, as of the begotten of the Father, understanding that God, amen, himself interjected himself into this world, uh, amen, to, uh, uh, to come and to save this world uh, because, amen, there was no uh, a sacrifice that was able to be given uh, that could redeem the, uh, uh, the depravity and the, uh, the depth that man had fallen away from God. There was no blood of bulls or goats. There was no law that could be given uh, that could reestablish, uh, uh, that could uh, uh, bring us back, amen, to a relationship with God except, amen, he shed his blood for us uh, and his blood cleanse us from all sin uh, and unrighteousness, amen. And understanding this, uh, when we look at what's coming, amen, and understand the height, the depth, the length, and the breadth of it, I, I, I'm struggling somewhat this morning because I, I, I see a need this morning, and I've wrestled with this thing for about two weeks, uh, and, and I've tried to find the exact place that God wants us to be, uh, and I've tried and I've sought the Lord, uh, and, and, and the enemy has fought against me uh, because he wants the church to stay asleep. He wants everybody uh, to continue down the path that they're going. Uh, he wants everybody to just stay the status quo. Uh, don't change anything. Don't ruffle no feathers. Uh, don't don't get loud. Don't get this, that, and the other. Uh, uh, just keep things going like they are. Uh, uh, but Brother Elmo, the Spirit of God, uh, has been dealing with my heart, uh, and I'm hearing things, and I'm seeing things uh, that's going to come against the church. Uh, amen. Things of evil, things uh, uh, that are going to destroy uh, uh, the weak-minded uh, or those that are not, uh, their, their root is not firmly, uh, amen, grounded in the Spirit of God uh, and in His Word, amen. 
in, uh, uh, the depravity of man's heart uh, and the things that he's allowed into his heart uh, in the day and hour in which we stand. Uh, amen. The lack of the preaching of the word of God. Uh, amen. No desire to seek God with all his heart. Uh, and there's a looseness about us uh, in the house of God. Uh, there is no discernment uh, for the danger that's coming. Uh, the watchmen on the wall uh, have fallen asleep. Uh, amen. They've given everything that people want uh, and refuse to give what thus saith the Lord. Uh, but again, in the church, uh, we must come back uh, to the place where we seek God uh, with all of our hearts, uh, where we uh, hunger and thirst after him, uh, where he becomes Lord of our life uh, instead of, uh, amen, just a figure in the sky that has no power and no meaning. Amen. I'm going to find the place where God wants me to be. You just give me a few minutes. Amen. I know the devil don't want to preach this. I know most people don't want to hear it, but that ain't going to stop me from preaching it. Hallelujah. In the 15th chapter of the book of Acts, if you will, go with me to verse number 35. Amen. i tell you what, just back up there to 31. Amen. 32, excuse me, 15 and 32. And Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. And after they had tarried their space, they were let go in peace from the brethren unto the apostles, notwithstanding it pleased Silas to abide there still. Now Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city, where we have preached the word of the Lord, and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. Barnabas wanted to take John Mark with them on the journey. But Paul thought not good to take him with them. Huh. Who departed from them from Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. Paul had an issue with taking John Mark. John Mark was with us, but he backed out and he left us, Barnabas, when we was in Pamphylia. Do you not remember that? And he did not go with us to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed one from asunder, one from another. Hmm. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas. And departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. Did you hear that? And Paul chose Silas. See, it's important who we choose to be with us in the fight. It's important for us to understand that we're in a battle. And this is the problem that we face in the church today. There's no understanding of the time frame in which we're in. We have, been, we have been rocked to sleep in the church to the place where everybody is more concerned about what they're going to do when they leave here than what they do while they're here. We're more concerned about what we've got to do at work tomorrow or where we're going tomorrow, or getting our itinerary ready, or what we're going to cook, or what we're going to eat, or who we're going to help, or where we're going to be, uh, than we are about the time frame in which we spend in the house of God. Amen. The moments that we're here, and what we sing, and pray, and preach, and teach, uh, is more important than anything uh, that we get on the outside of this building. What we come in here to get is to be filled, uh, to be strengthened, to be encouraged, uh, to be lifted up, to be blessed uh, so that we can go out into this world uh, and fight the good fight of faith uh, and understand, uh, amen, that I'm in a battle for not only my soul uh, but for the souls, amen, in my home, uh, the souls on my workplace. Uh, I take responsibility, uh, amen, in the name of Jesus Christ uh, to stand in the gap and to make up 
up the hedge uh, to pray over my home, uh, to pray over my family, uh, to pray for this community, to pray for this church, uh, to pray for men of God, uh, amen, to lift up the family of God, amen, to see it, amen, to preach it, to teach it, uh, amen, to wake up uh, and see that the devil is taking people, uh, amen, out of the flock uh, and he's taking them off to a never land uh, to where they will perish and spend eternity in hell. The church, well, I'm going to cover this thing today. My goodness, son. The Lord's been dealing with me about this issue. Who do we choose to help us in our fight? I realize that I'm in a battle. I realize I'm in a fight. Not a physical fight, but a spiritual fight. And the Bible here says that Paul chose Silas. Why does this matter and what does it mean? And what is the, the re, or what is the, uh, 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 why does it have to matter to me, Brother Chris? All right, if we turn over to the 16th chapter of the book of Acts, if you want to go with me there. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. We go over one more chapter, and we find that in the 14th verse of the 16th chapter, there was a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, and she attended unto the things which were spoken of by Paul. Now, we find here that whenever Paul chose Silas, they left, and they went in the direction that God sent them. The Bible says in the ninth verse that a vision appeared to Paul in the night and there stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. So Paul in a, 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 in a vision uh, uh, or a dream or a vision it says here saw a man in Macedonia that was praying and asking for help and for them to come over and, and to preach the word of God. And you see, Paul had to be discerning. He had to be close with God. He had to have that right relationship uh, to see the vision and then to have faith to trust in the vision. Uh, and he had somebody with him uh, who also was of a strength, amen, uh, who was willing to go and to pray uh, and to press into the things of God. Uh, so it matters who we choose uh, to go with us when we fight, amen. Uh, John Mark, on the other hand, uh, whenever Barnabas said, I want to bring him. Uh, Paul said, he's not ready for that which we've got to do. Uh, the work which we've got to do is above uh, his level of spirituality, where he is. Uh, he's still young. He's still weak. Uh, he can't handle this fight. Uh, I can't put him in this place. Uh, if I do, it's going to cause him even more harm. Uh, he's already left us uh, when we was fighting against the devil in Pamphylia, uh, and it ain't nothing like what it's going to be uh, when God gets us to where we're going uh, and the Lord was using him uh, to speak a word uh, amen but Barnabas said I want to take John Mark uh, it's proven throughout history uh, that John Mark was a, possibly a nephew uh, of Barnabas and Barnabas had a high hope for John Mark uh, Barnabas saw something in him uh, and wanted him to be a man of God uh, wanted him to come up like Paul uh, and he was and preach and teach and be strong uh, but he was not ready for the fight that was ahead uh, but Paul said I'm going to choose Silas uh, because he saw something in Silas amen that he could recollect with uh, he said he is where I'm at uh, his heart is for God uh, he wants to serve God uh, I can go to battle with somebody like Silas and he goes over and they come over to this city in Thyatira and they were praying and the Bible says that there was a woman there named Lydia and she heard them and the Bible says she attended unto the things which were spoken of by Paul. And it says when she was baptized and her household, she besought him saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, then come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Now as we went, or it says, and it came to pass, as we went to where? Prayer. Verse number 16 of chapter 16. 
And it came to pass. We, uh, we, we met this lady, uh, Silas and I did. We were praying down by the river where it says where women went to pray. Uh, and we were there praying. This woman, Lydia, heard us. Uh, and she began to attend unto the things uh, uh, which God was speaking through Paul. Uh, and she got baptized. She got saved or she said she loved God or served God. Uh, but she heard the gospel and it began to change her life. Uh, and now she asked them to come into her house. Uh, and as they were going to prayer... They wasn't going there to eat dinner. They were going there to pray. They were going there for business. Amen. And the Bible says, As they went, a certain damsel, possessed with the spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. So as they were on their journey, as they were going to do what God would have them to do, amen, they're just praying and seeking God, loving God, serving God. They're on their journey. But now Paul is linked up with somebody who is like-minded and got Paul's, in other words, iron sharpeneth iron. Amen. And when you know that you're in a spiritual battle and you know that uh, you've got to have your mind about you and you've got to be praying and serving God, it helps to have somebody with you, uh, amen, in your spiritual journey uh, who loves God and wants to pray and seek God on your behalf uh, and to help you. Uh, it keeps you focused, amen. It keeps you in line, uh, amen. God gave him a choice, uh, Barnabas and John, Mark, or Silas, uh, and we see who Paul chose. Amen. The Spirit of God was strong in Barnabas. The Spirit of God was strong in Paul. But we see here there was a contention between them because Barnabas wanted to take his nephew and he wanted, he wanted his nephew to learn at the feet of Paul. But see, it wasn't time for him. Uh, he couldn't handle what was coming. And there was no use in putting that young boy in the place where we're going to be fighting the devil on a ground that we've never fought on before. I need somebody who's strong. Uh, you look at your life today uh, and what you're going through. Uh, and can you count on the people in your life uh, to be praying and seeking God on your behalf? We need a Silas. We need a silence. Why? What, what difference does it make, Brother Chris? I love God. I serve God. God's going to fight my battles for me. See, this is, the, this is the place we've come to in modern Christianity where there's no longer any responsibility on my behalf. All I've got to do is just show up and God's going to do everything for me. There is an element of truth to that. Amen. God does fight our battles. Amen. God does make a way for us. Uh, God does, amen, keep us in perfect peace. Uh, God does, amen, do everything that we can't do. Uh, but there is irresponsibility in a Christian's life when he or she thinks uh, that I have no responsibility, amen, to serve God uh, and to honor God with my life, uh, to pray and seek His face. Uh, we've got to quit praying 50 cent prayers uh, and wanting million dollar answers. Uh, we got to Start sowing to the kingdom of God. Uh, not just money, but our time, our effort, our abilities, our gifts, our talents. Uh, giving it back to God. Uh, asking God to help us, uh, to revive us, to move us. Uh, we want power. We want God to help us uh, in the day and hour in which we live. Uh, and we must get somebody, amen, who will stand at our side, amen, and help us in this fight. Hallelujah. We need a Silas in our life. It's important who we choose to go to battle with. It's important to know. It's of the utmost importance to understand that we are in a battle. Amen. It's of the utmost importance to understand that we are in a battle. Amen. How many of you love the Word of God? Amen. I love the Word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I was thinking about this. As I was preparing this morning, I, I've been all over God's Word this morning trying to find exactly where the Lord would have us to go to. But, the, uh, but uh, Peter reminds us that the enemy is as a roaring lion. And he reminds us that he's out to seek, to devour, amen, and to kill and to steal and to destroy. He's out to tear down. So we understand that we've got a battle that we're in. Uh, every day we're fighting a battle. Some days is more intense than others. But as we begin to look to the days that are coming, I'm seeing a turn up of the intensity of the heat on the Christian. 
What do you mean? As I was uh, uh, looking the other day and reading some information that's coming, a lot of us know, maybe we know, maybe you don't know, that our sheriff has stepped down. Brother Keith and I was talking one day, and he said Anthony made the statement that as long as he was the sheriff, he was not going to enforce the law that says that it's wrong to preach against homosexuality. He wasn't going to do it. Well, let me tell you what the devil did in, in that instance. The devil come against him and got him out of office. See, whenever men make statements to stand for God in positions of power, you better watch out because the devil's coming. Why? Because he's getting his people in these positions of power. And the reason it's so important to know who's fighting with us and to choose the right people to come up beside us is because our fight is not against, amen, uh, flesh and blood. Uh, it's not against uh, uh, people that, are, uh, that can't harm us in the sense uh, uh, they, we can fight and we can have uh, trouble, uh, but we're fighting against the enemy uh, who's trying to steal our soul. Uh, Sister Beth, that's about life and death. Uh, it's about heaven and hell. Uh, it's not about the here and now, uh, but it's about eternity, and it's about understanding that I'm a stay uh, with God. I must fight to do everything uh, to hold on to Him, uh, to love Him and honor Him. Uh, I need people around me uh, that's going to stand my back, uh, that's going to fight the fight, uh, that's going to look up to Him uh, and give Him glory and honor, uh, that's going to get in the trenches, uh, that's not going to back up, uh, that's going to say, we in this fight together. Uh, we're going to the promised land. Uh, we ain't giving up, backing up now. Uh, we've come too far to lose out now. So the statement was made. Well, I heard in a roundabout way, how many of you has ever heard of the PC police? This is called political correctness police. All right? It's a kind of a new term to a lot of people. We've heard of political correctness for some time now. The day's coming when there's going to be somebody walking that back door that's coming here just for the intent purpose to find out what we're preaching and what we're teaching. They're going to blend in. They're going to sing the songs. They're going to raise their hands. They're going to shout sometime. They're going to speak in tongues. They're going to be just like you. But their purpose is coming to hear what we're preaching and what we're teaching so that they can go back to those that are going to have the enforcement of law. And the law is going to be on their side because the law is in Congress now to pass it that if you preach against homosexuality, it is a criminal offense. Uh, uh, and it's no longer a fine, but it's going to be a term of imprisonment and they're wanting at least five years. I may have made this statement Wednesday night. Some of you may have heard me. But I've got a wife and three children. I need people that I can depend on to fight. I'm not talking about a physical fight, but I'm talking about a spiritual battle. I need a church that says, Brother Chris, that we're not going to back down. We're not going to give in. We're not going to lay down and just let. But we're going to be, whenever Peter was put in prison, the Bible says that they were in the house praying for him. Uh, and they were praying so hard, amen. Uh, and they were so intent and lost in prayer that the doors of the jail opened up. Uh, and Peter came and knocked on the door. Uh, and the little girl opened it up. And she was a shock that he was there. Uh, and she closed the door on him and ran in and told him and said, Peter's outside. They said, well, let him in then. I need a church that's going to be praying. Why? Because we're fixing to face some things we've never faced before. You see, Christianity has its foundation in the Word of God. All right, so several years ago, there was a real strong effort to change the Word of God. Why? Because if we can change the Word of God, then what we can do as a PC police is we can find those that, have, that are going our way in the direction that we're moving them to and we can separate them from who's trying to hold on and preach the truth. It's important what Bible you read because there's Bibles that are leading people astray. 
But see, now the PC police can, can look at this thing, Sister Faith, and they can see who is trying to stay the old-fashioned way, the firm way. Amen. It's right. It's wrong. It's heaven. It's hell. It's in. It's out. It's up. It's down. You can't be this and be this. Huh? But it's straight down the middle. Amen. They've got a way now to tell the difference. See, Christianity causes people not to like you. Even though it's founded and it is love. But it causes those who are not born again to hate you. So they've gotten themselves together. And now they say, Brother Robbie, we're going to make a law that if you speak against evolution, if you preach in creation, it's going to be a term of imprisonment. And see, whenever you begin to look at the religions in this world, they all can, can, uh, can find their roots in evolution. But there's only one that stands uh, in creation. Uh, and guess what that is? Uh, it is those who love God through Jesus Christ, His Son, uh, who was given to us for a propitiation of our sin, uh, who stood in the balance and hung on a cross, amen, and bore our sins uh, and our transgressions uh, and shed His blood for us that we could be set free. So they've got us there. Brother Darrell, if I don't preach evolution as a, as a, as a fact, if I preach in, in a, a creation by a God, then it's a term of imprisonment. Do you see some of the things that's coming? And it's important who we choose to go to battle with us. And the reason it's so important is because, Brother Robbie, when we get in jail... See, it ain't time then to have a John Mark with you. It's time then to have a Silas with you. Hey Amen. I want a Silas with me. Amen. I want people that will pray and seek God. I need people, amen, that's not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, who are we choosing to fight with us? Uh, who are we going to battle with? Uh, and will they stand the test when we get there? So they want to pass a law preaching against homosexuality will be an imprisonment. Preaching against evolution as nothing but a made-up thing of man will be punishable by prison time. And they've also, this PC police has found a way to get into Congress and trying to pass a law that if you believe that global warming is just a myth, then they're trying to find a way to get you to serve jail time. See, I don't believe in global warming. I believe in holiness and righteousness. And I believe that there's sin in the world. But Peter gave us some insight of what's going to take place. I, I ain't got time to go there. So we know we're in a battle. We know who our battle's with. Who are we choosing to go to fight? So the Bible says, and I'm, I'm going to read this, preach a little bit longer, and I'm going to close. It came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God which show unto us the way of salvation. And this she did many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, not to her, but to the Spirit that was in her, it's very important that whenever we stand for holiness and righteousness that we don't condemn the person uh, but that we talk to the spirit that's driving the person. Uh, amen. You can hurt people uh, and cause them to leave the church uh, and to not want to be a part of the church uh, or you can be right with God uh, and do it in a way that goes to the spirit that's driving the wrongness uh, and do that and preach to that or talk to that or speak to that. Uh, amen. And you can save that person's life. Not we save it, but God works through us. 
So Paul spoke to the Spirit, or turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her, and he came out that same hour. So the Spirit that was possessing her and that was giving her the power to do the things that she was doing came out of her that hour. And when her master saw the hope of their gains were gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. All right, so let's look at this. Two men of God going to pray, day in and day out, being followed by a woman that is chanting. What is she chanting? These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. These men, amen, are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Day after day, following them. These men are the servants of the Most High God, and they show unto us the way of salvation. You see, when the enemy got in the presence of God, uh, hey amen, he can't do nothing, amen, uh, but give glory to God. Uh, amen. He was saying, amen, because in the presence of God, uh, hey amen, every knee shall bow, uh, every tongue shall confess, uh, hey amen, the spirit of the enemy uh, cannot overcome the spirit of God, uh, and greater is he that's in us uh, than he that's in the world and when we stand for God in holiness and righteousness and we walk according to the amen to this word of God when the enemy comes in contact with us he cannot overcome us but he must declare amen who we are these men are what these men are the servants of the most high God the enemy would love nothing more than to destroy Paul and Silas but in the presence of God, God in them, the Holy Ghost in them, is God with us. Amen. That being interpreted that God with us, Emmanuel, understand this. He came not only to redeem us, but he came to live in us and give us power and help us, amen, to, perver to traverse this world and to have victory every day and not be subject unto the devil, but he's subject unto us. We have victory. We have the victory if we walk in it and we serve God and we look to Him and nothing else. The enemy can't defeat you. When you walk in the valley, He's the lily of the valley. But I told you before and I still believe it. We create those desert places. God don't want us to go through the desert. He talks about the mountains and the valleys. But I'm glad to know that he is the rose of Sharon. <laughs> hey Amen. And, and see, the rose of Sharon has a what to it? A fragrance to it. Amen. What does that mean? When we are walking in the valley and we get to that place where we start having our pity party, we create the dryness that we start standing in. Amen. The valley is full, amen, of cool temperatures uh, and cool water, amen. There's no water running on the mountain. It's all in the valley, amen. Uh, and that's where we get our strength from. Uh, but whenever we come in our pity party and we start, amen, declaring what we want instead of what God wants, uh, we form us a little desert right off that path. Amen. We stand there in that dryness and our mouths get parched. Our tongue cleaves to the root of our mouth. Our feet walk through dry and dusty places. Amen. Just off the path where God wants us. But he says, I'm the rose of Sharon. Amen. He says, because I still want you to know I'm near. But you're going to have to come back to me. We could go deeper in that, but we're not today. Paul and Silas. Every day going to prayer. In other words, doing the will of God. Preaching, teaching, serving God, seeking God, living for God. The enemy is trying to overthrow them. Paul turns grieved in the spirit about hearing this because now she's beginning to mock them. And in, in the sense of it being a mocking, see little David, whenever Goliath was in the valley mocking the God of Israel, and talking down to the children of God, there was something that rose up in little David that said, I must put a stop to this. And it was the same way 
with this woman of divination as she kept on and kept on. It turned into a mocking and it turned into something that was trying to bring dishonor. Amen. Or put honor where it wasn't supposed to be. And here Paul turned and was greed and he spoke to that spirit and cast that spirit out of that woman. And those who were using that woman for their own uh, devices, it sounds a lot like the world we live in today where we have those who manipulate others to get what they want. So we, we, we see this working in the system today, people using other people as pawns to get what they want. And we see this, that when the church stands up and, and, and bees the church again, I know that ain't good English, but that's the way it is, amen. If we bees the church again, we could see, amen, the enemy be driven out. But nobody wants to stand up. Nobody wants to be accountable. Nobody wants to bring attention to their self. Nobody wants to be the one that's going to stand up. Paul chose to stand up against it with Silas. And we see that the men grabbed them because they lost their cash cow. They lost their easy ticket. They lost their meal ticket. So we, we, we see this same spirit, brother, there working in this world that we live in today where there are those who are moving and they're using people to manipulate and get what they want. And then this little church starts standing up and starts praying and seeking God. So they send the devil, or the devil comes and begins to try to tear it up. I've watched it year after year growing up, amen. I've seen revivals come and I've seen people get born again. I've seen the, the, the Lord work miracles uh, and then I've watched the devil try to tear people down uh, and I've seen him come against homes, uh, against families, uh, against men and women and break homes up uh, and tear children away uh, and I've seen people turn their back on God uh, and walk away because it got hard uh, but let me tell you something, the days are coming uh, when it's going to be father against son uh, mother against daughter, daughter against mother-in-law, uh, son-in-law against father-in-law, uh, we're getting to the place uh, where the devil's going to use every means necessary uh, because he has but a short time uh, to defeat us uh, but if we'll stand strong uh, and bring a solace along with us uh, we can stand and fight the test yeah. hallelujah so they thrust them in to the center of the city these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city they teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive sound familiar Listen to that. These men being Jews, what they're going to say, these men being Christians, it may be they come in here and grab me and Brother Keith and haul us up there to the city hall and put us out there on the steps and say, these men being Christians teach things which are not lawful for us to do. Hmm. They do exceedingly trouble our city with their preaching and their teaching and always talking about it's wrong to for homosexuals to do this, that, and the other. It's wrong for people to use drugs. It's wrong for people to drink. It's wrong for people to lie. It's wrong for people to steal. All this yang, yang, yang that they keep talking about. Uh, they keep talking about their Bible. Uh, we destroyed that old Bible. We've got a Bible now that says that these things aren't necessarily wrong uh, if you do them the right way uh, and if you love God and go to church. Uh, but they keep teaching this stuff. Uh, they being Christians are troubling our city and are causing a problem in our city and we must do away with them. That's coming. That's coming. Hmm. They teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. In other words, they identified them. And the multitude rose up together against them. See, it's if you talk about homosexuality now, it don't bother most people if you talk about it in a positive light. 20, 20 years ago, you talked about a man and a man, and you'd have an uproar. You could talk to somebody casually on the street about it, and they'd tell you right quick, that's wrong. But you bring that topic of conversation up today, well, as long as it don't bother me, as long as they don't try to do it to me, as long as it ain't in my house, I don't care what they do. That's their business. Now, I'm going to be the first one to say something that's going to probably shock you. 
It is their business. But it ain't right. And a person can sin whatever sin they want to sin. And I could care less. Because I'm not going to hell for them. I'm going to heaven. But in order for me to make heaven, I've got to call sin, sin. And I've got to speak against it. Now, I don't have to do it in a way that hurts or hinders or causes them to leave and not want God. Which it most time does because they get mad at me and they go the other way. So as I traverse this slippery slope, let me say it this way. Amen. Whenever I see the, th the signs that are coming, I know that there's going to be people that's going to disagree with me when I preach that it's wrong according to the Word of God. There's going to be people that are going to say they love God with all their hearts and they serve God just like I do, but they don't see nothing wrong with it. We're coming to that day where people are going to agree with it, but it's still wrong according to the Word of God. And whenever we choose a Silas and we choose or we, it's time to choose somebody to go to battle with us, uh, we need to make sure we know who's coming up with us because when we start standing up for what's right, uh, the majority is going to fall for the other uh, and they're going to rise up against you just like they did against Paul and Silas. And they're going to say, these men are teaching things that's unlawful for us to receive. Unlawful. Meaning there's going to be a law that they're breaking. Uh, imagine that. In 2016, we're standing here talking about homosexuality, amen, being a law saying that it's right to do it. When the law of God says it's wrong. And I preach the law of God because I please God and not please men. But yet I'm going to jail for standing up for what God said. They said they would be a day, the Bible did, when they would call good evil and evil good. Wake up, church, we're there. It's not coming, we're there. It's just not as prevalent in our area as it is in others. But it's ever more getting here. The PC police is coming. And they're going to be watching you. They're going to be watching this church. See, the Bible says to don't believe every spirit, but try the spirits and see if they be of God. See, for a long time, I never really understood that in the, in the context of what he was trying to tell us. Sister Faith, I believed that that meant that there were people living among us who were claiming to be Christians, but they wasn't. What I call, you know, kind of a, 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 a what is it, a, a Eastern Christmas Christian. That's the only time you see them is on Eastern Christmas or homecoming Christians. They're there at homecoming and then you don't see them to the next homecoming. Uh, that's what I always understood it to kind of mean. I, that was the, the depth of my knowledge concerning that. But as the Lord began to reveal this unto me, it's try the spirits. Why? Because there are going to be spirits walking among us uh, that have an ulterior motive. It's not talking about just people who aren't living right, but they're trying to sit in the church house and claim they're right. Uh, but it's talking about people that's going to come uh, with the intent, amen, of trying to fool you uh, and trying to haul you to prison or to jail or to bring you before, amen, the Antichrist, uh, if you want to see it that way, but they're going to go in like Paul did when his name was Saul and to bring people that call upon the name of the Lord and to put them in jail or even to kill them. That's why it's important to be able to discern between what is right and what is wrong. It's important to be able to discern the Holy Ghost from the imposter which is a Jezebel spirit. It looks good. It sounds good. Oh, they've got good music. Oh, they've got a good preacher. Oh, he says everything real good. Uh, but it's the spirit of Jezebel. It puts on a false front. But what's underneath all that makeup was a pure dog. Now, you can cover a pig in powder and paint all you want to, but she's still a pig underneath. Now, I don't care. You can wear makeup all you want to. That's you and your business. But I'm going to tell you something. You're still the same underneath. I've seen them put so much on. 
that when they take it off, oh, my God. I, I, I personally don't believe in it. But that's, my, that's me and my business. I like a person to look natural like God made them. Take that for what it's worth. Paul and Silas brought into the center of the city. They're fixing to be tried for doing simply what God told them to do. I know I said I was going to finish while I go, didn't I? The multitude rose up together against them. The magistrate rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into the prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. So whenever they brought them into the city, they rent their clothes and they commanded them to be beat. In other words, the public outcry was to, was to beat them. In other words, they've come against us and we want them beat. We want some type of physical punishment. It's that way today. It's no longer good enough for a person to lose their job if they do something wrong. But now they want to destroy their name. They want to destroy their credit. They want to destroy their family. They want to destroy their children. They want to to render that person uh, 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 useless for society and, 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 and just tear them apart in every shape, form, and fashion. If you get caught by the PC police saying something that's wrong, it's no more good enough, Brother Robbie, for a person who's been tried in the court of public opinion to stand up and say, look, I'm wrong, and I shouldn't have done what I did. I'm sorry, and I ask forgiveness. That don't cut it no more. They want you destroyed. They want you tarred and feathered and humiliated publicly. And everything about you to be destroyed from you all the way to your great-grandchildren. They commanded them to be beat. When they laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison. Not only did they go to prison, but they went to the inner prison. The jailer said, this charge is so great that I don't trust them to be in the outer prison. We want to carry them to the inner prison. But the Bible says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. See, it's important who you take with you in the battle. Had Paul chosen to go with Barnabas and John Mark, he could have been in a, whole, a totally different situation. You say, well, Brother Chris, he might not have been in jail. Even worse, he could have been in jail with Barnabas and John Mark. <laughs> well, let's look on the bright side, Brother Chris. He might not have been in jail if he'd have went with them. Liberalism is killing the church. This liberal mindset that, well, I don't want to fight. I don't want to say nothing. I don't want to do nothing. I just want to sit here and make heaven my home at the end of this journey. And I'm just praying that God will get me in one day when this life's over. Keep that up. The devil's going to eat you for breakfast. The warning is this, is that we're in a fight for our life. And it's not that we get a second chance to go back and do it over again. When it's over, it's over. How the tree falleth, that's how the tree lays. So what we need to understand then is in this life, I've got one opportunity to live this life. Now, in the course of this life, I'll fail God probably many times between here and home. But the, the good news is, is that the Bible says He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins if we ask Him. All right, so knowing that I have a merciful God and a God that's full of grace and truth and mercy and that He's willing to forgive me if I'm willing to humble myself before Him and to ask forgiveness, now let me do this. He's my Lord. as far, He is my salvation. But now I need to make Him Lord because my salvation uh, uh, that day is past. Uh, so what I've done that day uh, was a great thing. It was the right thing. It was the only thing that could bring me life, amen, was to accept Jesus Christ. But now I've got to live every day, so I need to make Him 
him Lord of my life, and in making him Lord of my life upsets the enemy and causes the enemy to come against me. So now, Sister Beth, I join a church. I become a preacher, a singer, a Sunday school teacher. I cut the grass. I cut the air on. I do something for the kingdom of God because I don't want to spend this life not doing anything for him. If I can't, I'll pray for the church. I'll come here on Tuesday morning. I'll push a meal away. I'm going to do something, amen, for the kingdom of God, and I'm going to say it out loud. God, I push this plate away because I want you to bless my church. God, I'm coming to this altar to pray for that revival that's coming up next week. God, I want you to shower Brother Brandon with anointing. I want the Spirit of God to be in this place. I want the devil to be driven out of Barron County. We need to claim it in the name of Jesus Christ and stand up and fight and find you a solace, amen, somebody you can go to battle with and let's get busy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So at midnight, they begin to pray. If John Mark had been there, could have went totally different. Oh, Paul, what are we going to do? Paul, what are we going to do? I don't know what to do. Paul, well, we need to pray. I can't pray at a time like this. I'm so, I'm so addled, I don't know what to do. I love you, but I don't need you at that time. I mean, I'm praying for you to get stronger. But don't come up there with me right now. You, you, send me Silas. Send me somebody that says, hey, Paul, I don't mind getting in jail with you. I know how to pray. And we're going to pray and God's going to answer. What did he say here? The Bible says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. So they began to pray. And what happened was, is as they began to pray, why? Because when we get into a situation that we can't do anything about, we serve a God that still can do everything, amen. So we begin to pray, amen. God, I didn't know I was coming here. I don't know why you got me here, but I'm here, and I can't get out. So I'm going to call on your name. I'm going to begin to pray. And what happened was, as they began to pray, the Spirit of God began to move in that place and when the spirit of God is there's liberty and where there's liberty there's freedom and where there's freedom amen the heart can sing so even in the jail cell they was free as a bird and begin to pray and sing and God opened up the jails that's how God works you can't sing first <laughs> you got to pray first why if you can sing you ain't in trouble I'm going to go ahead and tell you. If you can sing, you ain't in much trouble. <laughs> so what I'm telling you is this. There's things coming that's bigger than you've ever been in before. And your relationship where it is now, where you are with God, is strong, but you're going to have to get stronger. You're going to have to link up with people. That's why I love this little church. I believe this church is set for such a time as this. I know there's a lot of empty seats. I, I don't, you know, don't misjudge my statement here. This church needs to be in this county at this time. God has called me for this time. God has called you for this time. There are things that are coming that other churches are giving in to and allowing it to work in their midst. And they're not going to stand when they have to stand against the enemy in the way he's fixing to come. I'm telling you this as a fact, amen, and I love you with all my heart, uh, but we're going to have to get stronger. That's the warning this morning. We're going to have to dig deeper and go deeper and press in harder, amen, because when we go to fight this devil that's coming against the place of the churches at this time, uh, it's going to be worse than anything we've ever fought. See, up to this point, it's been mostly ridicule. When Jimmy Swaggart failed, most people thought he was not the next coming of Jesus, but the Pentecostal world had a lot of faith in Jimmy Swaggart because he was preaching it now. He was telling them like it was, whether you liked it or not. There was a lot of other preachers that was preaching at that same time, but they wasn't saying some of the things that he was saying. And the devil come against him. Like it or not, agree with it or not, 
he was man enough to come before the people and say, I have sinned, and I have fallen, and he asked forgiveness. And he owned up to it. He didn't just say, I didn't have sexual relations with that woman, as another sleazy Arkansas Democrat did. I did not have anything to do with her. And the whole world ate it up like it was the gospel. But a man preaching the gospel, they've criticized him, ridiculed him, and he's still a laughing stock outside of the church even to this day. If you mention the name Jimmy Swaggart to a lot of people, they snicker and laugh. <laughs> Ain't nothing to him. A lot of people in the church still say the same thing. But when you listen to him preach and what they stand for, he may have fallen. But I know another man greater than Jimmy Swaggart that fell. And his name was King David. But he didn't stay down. And he humbled himself before God and he said, Create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. In other words, I need to be clean. He says, I'm filthy. I'm dirty. There's something bad going on here, God. I need you to wash me and clean me. And God did. We need to understand who's with us in our fight. So in other words, they ridiculed Jimmy Swagger and many others that time doesn't allow to, to talk about. But now it's no longer about trying to ridicule the pastors and the churches, but it's about getting them to close the doors. It's about running them out of town. It's about putting them in prison. It's about destroying their name destroying their credit, destroying our, their place of work. Everything about those people that claim they love God and they talk against homosexuality and abortion and they talk against globalism, they talk against evolution, they preach against all this stuff that the new world order uh, holds up so high and all these little remnants around, these little churches that are holding on and preaching the King James Version Bible and holding to it, amen, and trying to live for God. They're going to do everything they can to stomp us out. That's what's coming. Now, to the weak at heart, maybe that's why God wanted me to preach it this morning because I know most of you will be back. But there's a lot that you can say that to, and they won't want to come back, Sister Diane. They'll say, I, I, I don't know about this. Who are you choosing to go to battle with you? See, when I go to jail... I want silence for me. Now, when I call you, let's go pray for somebody. Don't say, brother, I can't go. I got something to do that day. <laughs> Nobody wants to be with Brother Chris now. Nobody wants to ride with him. Nobody wants to go with him. I, I got to move my washing machine. I, I, call me next time you want to go pray for somebody. You be with that man. We love to go to jail. I love you. I appreciate you. And I thank you for what you mean to me. I hope the, the I hope you take the warning serious and the understanding that what we're facing right now is not as intense as what it's going to be. And that we need to be prepared. And those that are around us, our wives, our friends, our children, I, I know we can't Whenever we begin to, to get preachy around people, they tend to want to leave you alone. I, I, I understand that as good as anybody. But we can't quit living the gospel in front of those who are not living right. Pray and ask God to give you the message, to speak it in a way that, that they'll hear it and that it'll be effective in their life. You don't have to beat them over the head with the Bible. You don't have to try to hurt them or tear them down or bring them into condemnation. Sometimes the simplest of things, if we'll just allow God to work in our life, will speak volumes in their hearts. But I'm sincere when I say this. Pray and ask God for the, for the direction to speak to our friends, our family, and our loved ones and those that we're concerned about. 
Because what we're fixing to face is fixing to separate the church. The righteous are going up, and those that have been pretending and playing are going to be left behind. And they will enter into a time, the Bible says, Jacob's trouble. A time like there never was or never will be again. It'll be the tribulation period. I think we're knocking at the door to that time. I want you to come back tonight, Lord willing. If Jesus don't come back, we want to be back tonight at 6. And uh, we want to get a little deeper in that which is to come. And we're going to go to Revelations tonight. And I pray that you will come back and